let's take a look at Warhammer Quest Shadows Over Hamhell. Warhammer Quest is widely regarded as one of the best dungeon crawlers that's been made and a few years ago uh, Games Workshop sort of revisited the Warhammer Quest games and they made they released two in two years, uh, Silver Tower and what we're going to be looking at today, Shadows Over Hammerhell. Warhammer Quest Shadows Over Hammerhell was released in 2017 and unfortunately due to Games Workshop's new policy of crediting everything anonymously to the design studio rather than crediting individuals we don't actually know who created and worked on the game. Well maybe you do but I don't and I can't find anything, any names so yeah a sad state of uh, how they do things nowadays but ho oh hum. Uh, it was, uh, I guess you can look at it as a companion piece to uh, the Silver Tower, which was released the year before, whereas that was cooperative. This is uh, Games Master versus Players. The game is set in a tainted warrens beneath the twin towered city of Hammerhell, so perhaps a better name for the game would have been Shadows Under Hammerhell, which I just sometimes refer to it as, it makes more sense to me. The game is for two to five players, with one player taking the role of the Games Master. The story of the game involves players banding together to prevent a chaos plot to destroy the city, which inevitably involves going down in the sewers and catacombs beneath the city and having a good old fight with some monsters. So uh, let's have a look at what's in the box. It's a gorgeous box for a start. I just love uh, the art on it. Hello. Am I sold on these now? The uh, Sigmarines? I don't know. I don't like the expressionless helmet, but it's kind of, even with that, it's still reminiscent of Hero Crest and Advanced Hero Crest. So, you know, with all the heroes doing stuff in the background and the monsters surrounding them. Yeah, I kind of really do like this. I can't flip it up, but it's got colour, like all, it's full colour all the way around, but let's get into it. Open it up and I've already opened this and before we get down to it I'm going to apologise because I've just put my models in the box as best as possible. They're not normally there and I was waiting on the foam insert but that I ordered back in January. It still hasn't turned up so I won't be using that shop again, that online store again. People seem to love it. I've had nothing but trouble from them. Not going to say anything, but yeah. So don't freak out when you see mo models in the box. They're not normally in here like this. But anyway, the first thing we got is this, which is the guidebook. This is uh, the rules, and it has a lovely uh, this here. Main shot of this, amazing sinful, which is effectively a little mini novella, which is the background story about how the heroes may the plot and. My cat, great. Um, yeah, so this is uh, quite a wonderful thing. This story, I love reading this. I've actually read it a few times now. But look how, look how, look how long this goes on for. You're effectively getting a little mini novella, I guess. Uh, then you have uh, setting up and the rules. It is cool. They're not that difficult. Not that difficult. Standard. Warhammer Quest, old Warhammer Quest, and if you played Silver Tower, you're going to get on this perfectly. Ugh. I love my cat. <laughs> yeah, and it has some uh, lovely pictures of the miniatures all painted up. Mine look nowhere near as good as that. You get a painting guide, which is cool. So you can follow the painting guide, it's really nice. Yeah, I actually think that's quite a cool book. I like that. Uh, here we look at next. Yes, yeah, so I go for the assembly guide just to get this out of the way quicker. You get an assembly guide for the models, um, like so. 
which is a really cool assembly guide, uh, better than what I've had before from Games Workshop, it used to be a bit ropey, whereas this one was actually really clear and concise, so that was cool. Might look at every page really, just flip through it quickly. But there was no confusion here, even when you have multiple parts, it was uh, clear and concise, really impressed with this. It came in handy. This is, I'm trying to save this to last so you can, this is the get, get, uh, getting started little sheet. So this basically goes through a game turn as if you're playing as the Lord Castellan, uh, which is really useful it, just to get your head around the rules and you can read a rule, but until you see it in action and this gives you just a bit more visual explanation the rules I like that it's an adventure book so if you're not a GM and you're thinking of playing this uh, look away now uh, I'm not really gonna go into detail on what's here uh, but yeah it's just got again all full color all lovely really easy uh, you can look back now if you're doing that I don't know do people actually do that I mean this is the visiting Cinderful section so in between um, Adventures you can go back up into the town and just do various things. It gets very role play, uh, role gamey kind of thing, and reminiscent of the original Warhammer Quest. There's all different activities you can do from gambling, drinking contests, go to a chapel there, uh, buy some equipment, do some stuff. It's pretty cool. I like that. Now, here, here we come to a bit of a negative for the game adversaries, they're in this book in this book so you when you are gonna quickly go back to a map or so so when you look at this as a GM you then have a flip up to the here I would like these to be in separate cards but unfortunately they're not well I believe you could buy them separately which you can't get hold of anymore so uh, I might photocopy these just so I've got a sheet or make my own thing of and then here you just got the uh, quick guide to the charts so you're gonna be using Next up, you have this inlay. I'm going to move my cam <laughs> just, so, <laughs> just so I can get it in because I now have a fat cat next to me. Yeah. So we have uh, this inlay here, which is lovely. So it's double sided as well. So you've got this with the uh, box art on. And get Don't Freak Out. Remember, Don't Freak Out. These models are normally put somewhere else. Just put them in here for the sake of this unboxing. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, look at let's look at the uh, character sheets. And Griffhound, Lord Castellant, a Black Art Fleet Master, Law Master, Cogsmith, and back to the Greyhound. So these are all your main characters. Pretty cool. If you do have Silver Tower, they're put still totally compatible with this game. You have those. We have uh, the Destiny thingy majiggy, Fate thingy, whatever it is, Fate Will, Destiny Will. Uh, if you played Silver Tower, you recognize this, but this is nowhere near the quality of Silver Tower. It's a bit thin, where Silver Towers was thick. Uh, and Silver Tower also had a place on it where you could put your treasure and your uh, skill cards. This doesn't have that. A bit thin, Ugh. but ho harm. Ho harm. Uh, next up, we have treasure cards. These are uh, have that back. There's no artwork on them or anything, but it's just the title of what it is. Just a bit of fluff in bold and some uh, rules in uh, at the bottom. Does it need pictures on? Who knows? That's uh, it's up to you. I'd kind of like a bit of artwork there. Uh, let's have a look at. You get the uh, skill cards next. So treasure and skill cards, just like in. Uh, Silver Tower, and um, how many times do I say Silver Tower in this video? So I kind of have a uh, helmet of a Sigmarine in there. And again, very much the same sort of uh, design as the others. You're going to get quite a few of these little tokens. These are wound tokens, and three skulls, but I think grievously wound tokens. Uh, get some gold markers for rooms uh, more wound markers here and on the back of these ones they're stun markers and enemies are stunned you get loads of little tokens you 
you get the lantern or whoever's the lantern player and you have this which is a little compass and on the back it's sinderful activities to remind the players what they can do when they're back in town which is quite nice quite useful All extra addition uh, you then have uh, artifacts I get them actually so because there's not a lot to look at again just just words fluff and uh, rules you have uh, all these these why don't we look at these these are what came in one of the white dwarfs so this is more of an expansion so I'll keep it in here uh, but they're similar to this which is uh, achievements so this is when your character levels up you'll gain one of these throughout the uh, various points of the game one level of experience I means you just have more skills and so forth uh, these cards are for in town when you go to Red Yugal and just those little things that will happen to you and now dice uh, that's, these are the destiny will uh, wedges that go around each player picks a color and then when they kill a monster that moves around to those all the way around they gain, gain some stuff a bit like Silvertail dice now in Silvertail you had different colored dice for different things you had purple for the destiny uh, board fake board uh, different colored dice for the people that would match their wages in this just plain old black dice so i tend to do away these and use the ones from silver tower uh, you got these these are portals these are basically effectively doorways uh, into different rooms now we're getting on to the uh, exciting bit which i think i will stop readjust the camera focus so it's not on autofocus so these are what the uh, tiles look like, the artwork. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get my head around whether these are CG generated or hand drawn or a bit of both kind of thing. But they are really nice. The problem with CG generated, they get a bit, you can see the repeat marks go on on them. Whereas these kind of look, each square looks totally unique. Yeah, they're really nice. Whereas, um, Silver Tower ones could be a bit busy. These are just lovely and grim dungeons, which is what I like in a dungeon crawler. But yeah, they're really cool. Double sided. Let me just quick go for them all. Just so you get a rough idea there. I mean, some might be repeats. Could be basic textures that are repeated. I'll see if I No, I don't think they are. I think they're. We have this. Just more ooh, ah, fire pit. More these this this game's more of a true dungeon in the operative sense. You are in dungeons and rooms rather than silver towers sort of craziness, which is nice, but yeah, before we look at the miniatures, I just really love this kind of stuff. It's sort of uh, back in the 80s, Games Workshop used to do floor plans for games such as role playing games, d and I used to have the horror one which had the same cover as Fighting Fantasy's House of Hell on it. So, uh, and they, these kind of reminded me of that. They're slightly, slightly cartoony rather than pure realistic. I just have that little. I know they're realistic, kind of. Well, you know, realistic as fantasy can be, but they just like that. Just sort of has this sort of cartoony, stylized edge to it, which I kind of like. This, uh, there's quite a few, quite a few, isn't it? Quite a nice thick car down. Stairs, important stairs. That room looks ominous, doesn't it? Such traps in that room. So yeah, here. I don't know if you can see that with the beasties. This has a slight cartoon stylized to it. So some fire pits. Ooh. You see what I mean there with the bones? 
They don't really look like realistic bones, do they? They're something you'd see in a graphic novel or something. But I like that. I actually like the style. It reminds me of uh, Warhammer Fantasy, which I actually really enjoyed for its dark gothic fantasy rather than whatever Age of Sigma is in is about, which I'm going to try and get into. This puts me off when it's just gods bashing each other over the head with things. You know? But that's what made me get into this game. It seems to be more old school fantasy, Warhammer fantasy, which I used to love. Not necessarily playing, just 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 the lore. So that's all the things, all the cards. Let's have a look at the models now. So your first model we're gonna look at is your Sigmarine. Let's might as well get all the Sigmarine. I actually do really like this model. Uh, let's I'm gonna refocus the camera. There we go. I actually do like these these models. Uh, I wish the helmets were a bit more medieval knighty, but you know, they're okay. Uh, they always remind me of some sort of Greek tragedy play rather than warriors. So we got him. We have the cogsmith. These are really cool uh, detailed models. Look at the amount of stuff and bits and bobs on them. Yes, they are uh, smashed out of the park, aren't they, with their new models? Games Workshop, the past sort of five years. And this is Lawmaster. Doing some sort of watery fireball magic. Yeah, I apologise for my painting isn't usual. It's not the best, but oh hum. Looks good on the tabletop. Not going to apologise for the uh, cat next to me because he's always there. He's my man. Uh, and what are we looking for next? Yeah, the Fleet Master. Sort of peg leg pirate elf dude. And that, that cape is just wicked. Love that. Love, 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 love it. Uh, where's Dog Dog? Griffhound. Yeah, so, sort of some sort of dog griffin hybrid. I love the concept of these. Uh, yeah, love. I have to get myself into Age of Sigma, I think. So, there's that. Let's have a look at some uh, mass, um, evil models now. I think that's all the good ones done. Uh, so let's look at some kayak acolytes. Uh, in Games Workshop, they paint them blue and bright. I think I would have said I wanted to get that dark gothic Warhammer fantasy, so I went kind of black and red, which I think makes them look more sinister. But I do like the blue colour they've done them in. And that. that one. Uh, you get a nice uh, variety of them in this. I mean, uh, I just love the fact they've detailed on the writing on the scroll. Just cool models. Uh, and you do get quite a few models in this. Uh, as they're individual, normally on these sort of uh, what's in the box sections, I can just show you one uh, of type and. You know, all the others are the same, but not with these. These are all pretty much individual and unique, which is just staggering when you think about it. Yes. Yes, dude. Uh, there's any more of the acolytes? Yes, there's loads. Uh, oh, I can't remember half the names of these things. So this is going to be fun. If I get, get them wrong, let me know. I think these are Kayak Acolytes. Blood Reavers next. These are sort of more grunts. I, you, you had loads of options for these, by the way. Um, so all these guys here, the Blood Reavers, I tried to give them all helmets because I hate painting faces, I'm not very good at it. So the Kayak Acolytes obviously have that skull moony face. Uh, whereas these guys, you could put a choice of faces, so I just tried to get as many helmets on them as possible. 
because I'm just not that good at painting faces. It's not that I don't like it really, I do quite like it. I just find painting faces, uh, I'm not that good at it. I'm not that good at painting, let alone painting faces. But and I think they look more menacing with helmets on. They look like Chaos Warriors from Hero Quest, which is what I was trying to go for in look and the scheme I used. Uh, yeah, I oh, see there's just so many. Not as many much variety in types though, it is effectively just uh, acolytes, reavers and what we'll look at next. But if you want to, you can import silver tower monsters in, and I believe there's a few others that are available at certain points. And here's here's a chap with a pound a horn. I mean, you probably see what I mean by the face here. I really can't really see it. But here, is oh, it's not that good at doing faces or getting it in centre camera so people can see. Apparently. Uh, next up is the. Uh, we looked at him. But there's a lot. The Putrid Bra Bright Kings? I'm assuming these are some sort of chaos thing. Big mutant, kind of pussy, grotesque things. Go against all the natural order. I oh, just really enjoy these guys. I've Kind of look terrifying to me. And again, there's really loads of options to uh, for putting these together. I mean, look at that, it's just grim. All those pussy boards and welts. Look at that one. These are beautiful in their hideousness, I guess. <laughs> I describe as beautiful models, but they are grotesque. They are amazingly grotesque. This guy carrying his big bell. And you may notice I've tried to put helmets on these as well. You can fancy, but there was options to have them without helmets. They're possibly my favourite. Just grim, isn't it? Look at that. Ooh, pussy. Warty. And that. Oh no, we forgot about him, the Chaos Sorcerer. Assuming this is going to be the big bad in the game. The main guy in behind there, think all. Pretty cool model. Yeah, so um, I was quite happy with what's in the box. I think Silver Tower, you get f probably a bit more variety in your monsters, but. That is what's inside Hammerhill. The first thing you're going to want to do is put the fate board uh, somewhere where all the players can gain access to it and put the cards, your treasure and your skill cards somewhere near. And each player will uh, pick a colour from the uh, renowned markers. And they will just uh, put it on the start which is this one here I would circle on. Let's put these here. And then the players will pick a character from one of the characters available. Or Castellan will get the Griffhound if as a companion. Next up is to uh, get the dice ready and all other tokens within reach. Uh, the first piece that will be laid is the stairs and the hero models will be placed on the stairs. And next up the game's broken up into different phases. Uh, the first phase is the destiny uh, phase and what you do is you roll five uh, destiny dice And any uh, doubles or non-unique 
uh, dice are removed. So in this case, these two fours here, they'll be removed. The rest are placed upon the fate board. If uh, no dice are removed or all the dice are removed, there will be a special uh, event that will, uh, an, un uh, an unexpected event will happen. And where Silver Tower, you'd look it up in a book, the DM has a table here for each adventure where a dice roll is needed. So in this case, it would be free. And this would be obstruction, uh, which will then um, the exit from this chambers, the exit from this chamber is blocked or locked shut. So that that could be bad. So then you would have to uh, get around that. Next up is the hero phase. Uh, this is where the main sort of hero and uh, heroes will do their their stuff. Uh, the first thing they can do is they can wait. So. Um, the game uh, starts off with the torchbearer, uh, so he gets the torchbearing card, which looks like that, so they'll get the torchbearing card, but they can wait until the others have done their turn and then he can act or she can act. Uh, apart from that, uh, it's down to taking actions. Uh, each hero will have a number of dice to roll uh, to begin with. In this case, it's four dice to begin with. Uh, if they take wounds, you put a wound marker here, so then you'd only roll three dice, or if you had two wounds, you'd only roll two dice. So you roll, uh, let's do Lord Ca Castle, shall we? Just because I like him, he looks, he looks like he's the boss. You roll four dice and you put them here on your chart, and then you can do actions. They're standard actions that everyone can do. Uh, there is a move which will cost a, a one, so you can move with that. So that's just uh, you can move up to your uh, movement value here, which is free for the Castellant. He's quite a slow, chunky, slow mover type dude. Uh, you can open a portal, which it will be you'd have to do here. When you open a portal, what happens is. DM will then set up the next part of the game. So let's have a look if we're going to play Ancient Halls. So uh, you'd get a portal which would be open. Like so. And then let's have a see if we can find it. So that would get placed there, like so. So this is, uh, I think we're in Adventure 2 here, Ancient Halls. So that's there. You can then uh, use a, uh, we could then move into free. So that'd be that, we'd use that to move. And you can search for uh, one plus. Uh, we'll move on to these in a second, but when you search, you uh, roll the dice. And the first term, we're looking for it to be a six or more. So if, they, if I want to research, I could roll the dice. It'd be five or more. And if I research, it'll be four or more. So I'd get a search. Uh, there are gold to tokens which are put on the board here. So if the search is successful, the player will take the gold token, show that this room's been searched, there's no point searching again. And then the GM will refer to um, the room they're in and see what is in there. So this is the bridge, which I haven't totally set up. There is two bits to it, but there's a bridge. And in this one, the search would be uh, the portal in the eastern wall is hot to the touch. That gives you a little clue. There could be treasures in there, there could be traps in there, kind of thing. So it's all, all down to uh, the GM. Another action they can do, which starts off at one plus, is recuperate. So if they've got any wounds, they can use a dice, and to begin with, it's one plus, and then they'll get receive a wound back. But next time they, recoup, they do a recuperate action, it's two plus. It will cost two plus, and it's, uh, next time it's three plus, and so on. So if you do it six times in a game, it's going to recuperate, it's going to cost you six. Uh, there are also actions that each uh, individual can do. Now these are normally uh, 
uh, combat actions, so which is listed here, uh, which we'll get onto in combat. But what these dice are here is if you want to use one of these dice, you can say I want to use a 2 plus because I don't want to use my 6 to move, I can use this and that will allow me to move. But what will happen is the highest number dice left on the board gets locked, so it put, gets put down there. So then I can't use that 6, I can still use this if I want to, I can't use this for this player. And when it's the next player's go, this dice gets moved back up to here. And then likewise, if they use the 3, the 6 gets locked, or if they use the 6, the 3 will get locked until the next player's go. Uh, combat is quite straightforward, uh, there's range combat, area combat and uh, sort of combats that are next to you. So if you had an adversary next to you, like so, I could do a combat action. So I could look at my weapon actions. I have a Castellan's Halberd, which is range combat, which means it's next to me. To hit, I've got, it's gonna be a uh, four plus. So it costs, so I need a dice roll here of one plus to do it. So I'd use this and I'd need to roll a four now on this to make sure it's successful, which is not. See if I can get it done, nope. 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 New dice. Nope. Anyway, so <laughs> let's cheat. So I get a 4 plus. It would then do 2 points of damage to this monster. Uh, but there's also different things I can do. I could, for 6 plus, if I've got 6 plus, I can, of course, do a healing light. And I have different traits which will come up in different cards. Um. And that is, and that's pretty much the actions for a. Uh, a player. The adversary phase is where the GM would move the monsters. He moves them in groups, so it would be all the acolytes, all the reavers, all the uh, black kings would move all together. There is in... Uh, where are they? I can use the behavior table here where I can roll a dice and see what they're going to do. Or really you don't have to do that. I can actually just as a GM just decide what they're going to do which basically amounts to move and attack or I can roll the dice and get them to do something special. Uh, when a hero is wounded you get to put a wound marker on you so if a monster wounded me I'd put a wound marker here but I have this save value so each time I take a wound I can roll a dice and if I get that score which I don't I would save the wound, so it's, nope, nope, oh god, yes, so I would have saved that wound, but if I don't, I take another wound, and the next time I roll my action dice, I can only roll two dice, until I heal. You can also be stunned, in which case you put this here, like so, and that's just a temporary uh, measure. Uh, which will go at the end of the turn but it does prevent you mean I'm rolling less dice if all my uh, spaces are full and I suffer another wound I am called grievously wounded what will happen then is I'm removed from the board and if you're the torch bearer, you hand the torch on to someone else the next player to your left and uh, once all the adversaries on the board are removed at the end of the hero turn, I can put my model back on the board and set them up in an empty space in the same chamber as the torchbearer. Um, if all the heroes get Groovesy Wound in the same turn, then that's it, the game is over and the game's master wins. Um, once you get put back on the board, you remove all uh, the uh, wounded tokens on the board but you add a, a grievously wounded token on a space, so that means you're permanently uh, weakened. Uh, the only way you can heal this wound is when you end the expedition and you go back up to Cinderful, you, there's somewhere where you can heal. If you suffer, or uh, get free grievously wounded and you get grievously wounded again you don't place a fourth one on there you do have at least one dice to keep to keep going at least to move I guess 
in an effort possibly to get back to the stairs, go up back up to Cinderfall and heal up. Uh, there can be ambushes in the game that the GM can play. Uh, this will happen in various different things. Normally when you're told to make an ambush roll, uh, you roll on the adversary table for that adventure and see what monsters are placed. As mentioned, there is uh, the opportunity to go back up into Cinderfall, which is where various different things can happen. This is Cin uh, visiting Cinderfall. Um, first thing you're going to do is you can have a, a random encounter. That's where you rolled on this and something good, bad, interesting, horrible, potentially horrible will happen. From there, you can participate in various activities. You can do a drinking contest, gambling, uh, I can't read this upside down, but it's, uh, was it Bergen's B B Bazaar, whatever, I can't really difficult to read upside down, uh, which is uh, some sort of uh, illicit st items that you can go and purchase. You have a chapel, which is where you can sort of heal up, uh, the Guild of Certified, oh my god, that's something where you can do something else I don't know I can't read it upside down uh, but anyway, you, you get the point there's just various different interesting things you can do you can only do one of these each time you go there so you do a random event visit one of these and then you're back in going back in the game so you sort of pick wisely uh, and do something these are more money these are healing buying um, yes here's the uh, buy stuff here from this store here uh, this is like some sort of mystics tent and in the white dwarf uh, expansion that was available you can go to silver tower potentially here which is cool uh, yeah and there's all different little games you can do here so yeah so it has sort of um almost like an rpg feel to it which i kind of really like i like that but yes that is a quick overview on how to play uh shadows over hammerhole Nope, not really, unless you count Silver Tower, but as I said in the intro, it's more of a companion piece, and in fact it was released first. Uh, there was an adversary set released, and this included new rules for enemies that could be used in the game. White Dwarf had a few issues covering the game, uh, the first being uh, December 17th. Uh, this had an article called uh, Return to Hammerhell. And in it you had rules for mercenaries uh, and two new uh, characters play you had the free guild general and the gunmaster there's also a section on return a uh, visit in cinderfall which is more stuff you can do in between games in cinderfall uh, i believe it had a adventure a new quest called the temple of slaughter next up was january 2018 and this had continued the return to Hammer House, so it had more stuff to do in Cinderfall, but it also contained another uh, adventure called uh, The Vermin Lair, and this was kind of very, I guess, very Skaven heavy. See here. And finally, there was February 2018, and again, return to Hammer Hall. Uh, this had more stuff to do in Cinderfall, an adventure called the Dark Hold Garrison, and I believe it's in this one. Yeah, if you can see here, this one allows you to uh, sort of play through sort of the Silver Tower. Thanks here, so uh, it kind of incorporates Silver Tower. You visit the uh, Ulogs uh, River that place <laughs> and from there you could end up in the silver tower so you could then if you have both games which I do and you sort of play through this you could end up going through silver tower um, it's still actually available on the UK store but I believe once the stock is sold it's not getting another print in so if you want it get in there too quick and it's not actually too expensive on the second hand market at the moment uh, silver Tower, on the other hand, is totally unavailable and getting quite expensive on the silver and second hand market. 
Uh, and that is it for Shadows Over Hamhill. Uh, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you watch the Let's Play, which will be coming up uh, next week. Till then, guys, take care.